For an upcoming video, Elias and I require a propane furnace. That's why I was grateful when Vivo reached out to me and offered their 10kg propane melting furnace for testing. I didn't need the furnace for metal melting purposes, but I've always wanted to try my hand at a technique called lost PLA casting. Specifically, I will use this method to craft an aluminum Möbius bracelet for my girlfriend. At this point, it's probably worthwhile to explain what lost PLA casting is. A detailed pattern of the desired part is created using a 3D printer. This part, made out of PLA, is an exact replica of the final metal part you want to create. So I 3D printed the Möbius bracelet in PLA. At the bottom there is a funnel shaped part through which the metal can be poured into the mold later on. I added a spruce to one of the bracelets which is just a channel where air can escape the mold. The printed PLA part is then embedded into a casting material, often a type of plaster or refractory material, leaving it as a void in the mold. In my case I used simple plaster, which turned out to be a mistake. After drying for 48 hours I further dried the mold by slowly raising the temperature of an oven to 250 degrees celsius. Before we get into the actual casting process, I would like to show to you what comes with the furnace. Inside the box you will find leather gloves and a pair of tongs for handling the crucible. I would recommend purchasing a special pair of tongs for a more secure grip on the crucible as well as the ability to tilt it for pouring out the metal. As you will see later, using the provided tongs can be a bit awkward. Additionally, you will find the main burner that attaches to the furnace, a pressure regulator for your propane tank and a hose for connecting the burner to the regulator. Necessary hose clamps and a bit of teflon tape are also included for assembly. Finally, there is a small graphite mold for casting small bars or coins from precious metals, the actual crucible and a stone slab for resting the crucible on. While I'm by no means an expert when it comes to propane melting furnaces or casting metals, I've seen this Vevo furnace in action in many YouTube videos and the owners seem to be very satisfied. Of course, if I were casting metals for a living, I would invest in a more expensive furnace. However, I believe this furnace is well suited for hobbyists. I did notice one minor issue. The thread of the screw that secures the propane nozzle in the burner is damaged, making it less secure. This doesn't significantly affect its functionality and can be easily fixed by using a screw with a slightly larger thread. If you are interested in getting this furnace yourself, you will find a link to the shop in the video description. One more quick note before we start casting metal. The mineral wool inside the furnace should be sealed with refractory cement to prevent the fibers from detaching and becoming airborne where they could be inhaled. Here you can see the two molds. This one right here is the one with three bracelets inside and the one on the from your side on the right is the one with one bracelet inside and also the vent port. I forgot to put a vent port in this one. And these molds have been heated in the oven at 100 degrees celsius for a few hours and then at 250 degrees celsius for a few hours to drive out all the moisture and the plaster. And as you can see the PLA already melted a little bit and um, got removed. But now we have to remove everything inside and for that we have to burn them out inside the furnace and that's what we're going to do now. Ideally you would slowly raise the temperature using an electric kiln but I had to work with what I got so I used this furnace. The plaster molds have now been baked out for around two hours and let's hope they are not cracked. Oh. Oh. F Let's see how the other one looks. Well, that's pretty disappointing. Well, maybe we can try to pass a well. <laughs> As you have seen, the molds basically completely deteriorated. Um, we think the temperature was too high. And I will definitely try again. I'm <laughs> pretty pissed. Okay, second attempt at making the PLA casting. I 3D printed um, two new models and I designed new uh, air vents right here. So they're a little bit larger. So that hopefully, as you've seen in the pictures, the metal will flow in the whole uh, piece. And I've made the wall thickness a lot thinner. I think it's 0.4 millimeters or something around that uh, value. And now I'm going to cast them in plaster again. I've learned from my last mistake and covered the workbench in uh, some plastic foil. Or it's actually a trash bag, um, so I don't have to clean up everything again. I have read somewhere that sand can improve the 
um, resistance of the mold uh, to cracking so I'm just going to add some no idea how much just by uh, feel and yeah let's do the first mold So it's now one week later and time for our second try. Right now I've put the mold with the sand additive inside the oven and now I'm just going to uh, heat it until the PLA is completely gone and then try to cast it. So let's hope it works this time. So the mold has been in the oven for about 45 minutes. That's way shorter than most sources in the internet say you need to keep it in the oven. They mostly stayed about two to five hours, um, but last time we left it in there for so long, it completely cracked. So I have two molds and I'm first going to try it with a shorter time. And after taking the mold out, Elias is going to heat it with a secondary burner to keep it hot, um, while I melt um, some alum aluminum. This is a piece of aluminum extrusion. And this is a piece of aluminum uh, I used to build something out of and I don't need it anymore. And normally you would use a second furnace or burner to keep the mold hot while you melt the metal. I don't have a second one and that's why we are using this method here. Okay, let's take a look and see if this result is any better. As you can see from the raw casting, the result is far from perfect. I suspect that the mold wasn't heated long enough to burn out all the PLA and wasn't hot enough when the metal was poured in, but at least it was something I could work with. I filled the incomplete area with aluminum brazing rod and after a lot of filing and sanding the result was somewhat presentable. My girlfriend at least was very happy with it. As it is often the case, the basic concept of lost PLA casting is simple, but the devil is in the details. And since I couldn't perform these experiments at my own place, I couldn't really optimize the process. Perhaps in the future I will attempt it again to make components for my vacuum chamber. The possibilities are certainly enticing. Until then, thank you a lot for watching.